I'm going to talk about the IOY, that is the Internet of You. Try this one more time. Aha. So I just had this sent to me that Mary Meeker on slide 187 of her uh, State of the Internet put AliveCore as being important along with Fitbit, soon to be IPO, and the Apple Watch for cardiovascular. Uh, we're a lot more important than they are, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. But that must mean we're real. So um, as a physician, and I left academic medicine 25 years ago, and my kids say, Dad's no longer a doctor. He's an inventor. We have to go from reactive to proactive and then to preventive. We have no choice. We cannot afford it. As the people in this room, people my age and younger start to retire, the costs, the demands will be unsupportable. And so the developed world spends too much. In the United States, we spend like twice as much as Switzerland, which is way more than anyone else. And we don't get our money's worth. And in the developing world, they don't spend anything, and they get exactly what they pay for. So how do we find technologies that can solve the problems of both the developed and developing world? OK, well, we're entering the age of digital health, mobile health. Anybody in here not have a smartphone, raise your hands. Nah, you're embarrassed, right? No, everyone here has one. So the new technologies that will enable both improved access and lower cost are probably in your pocket, on, in your purse, wherever. And I'm going to introduce you to some of these, which include smartphones, apps, wearables, cloud computing, machine learning. And I'm, I appreciate uh, Nikita for allowing me to visit the deep learning conference, big data analytics, of which machine learning and deep learning being a subset of that. And so the internet of you will be critically important to the future of healthcare. And so global digital health market relevance. In the US and, and, and Europe, in the developed world, it's cost. In the developing world, it's access. A gentleman who helped develop M-Pesa, which is the most advanced mobile money system in Kenya, told me, we buy bread by the slice, sugar by the spoonful, and we will buy health care by the encounter. And so digital health will allow us to extend without bricks and mortars without cost, access, and reduce the friction. And smartphones will enable better disease management. Real-time wearable data will help us. And obviously, as Abe just said, the deluge of data from wearables. I have a, an Intel basis peak, and obviously I have an Alive Core on my iPhone, uh, and I have a Withing scale on the Withing's blood pressure cuff. I am a quantified selfer, but I'm also old, and I'm worried about my health. So I practice what I preach. By the way, I weigh what I did in college, and I'm 60. Who can say that here? And I was a Division I athlete right down the river. Uh, physicians embracing mobile health and monitoring. IOI health solu solutions will become major business opportunities. Cloud computing is integral to all of these. We have to have some place to put it, some place to act on it. And it's not going to be in that watch. It's not going to even be on that smartphone. There will be pre-processing, but it won't be the serial comparison, the big data analytics. That's going to happen in the cloud. And so I coined a term I call the smartphone cloud because the smartphone will be our hub, our interface, for those wearables, which will be you know, low power, ultra low power devices, just like the devices in your home. You know, some of them may use Wi-Fi, but a lot of them will use other technologies, Zigbee, et cetera. And, and then they will have hubs that will take it out to the rest of the world. And so big data enables innovation. It's enabling it right now. We're at the early stages, so the opportunities are great for all you venture capitalists. And machine learning will enable us to turn big data into insights, as Abe talked about. So deep learning, what we talked about, enables predictive analytics. And in medicine, prediction means prevention. Where is the epidemic going to break out? And let's go help those people first. So physicians are beginning to adopt and accept data from that Fitbit, from that Withing scale. And that's going to be very important. And patients who have to buy these things, who have to figure out how to pay for them when we are addicted to our third party pay, our Medicare, our health insurance, are going to have to accept ownership. And there, anybody here think your health insurance premiums and deductibles are going down? Anybody here think they're not going up? God, you know, I'm betting 1,000 a day. This is really good. OK, so the smartphone will be the world's personal health care portal. 
and it will enable the uberfication, the personalization of healthcare access. And uh, you know, we have an, as many cell phone accounts as we have people, right, at seven billion. So my expertise, and I come from cardiovascular medicine, and it's still bad. So at, at a recent, two years ago, American Heart Association, one of the leading cardiologists from Beijing got up and said, we in China export lots of things to you in America, but you have exported one thing to us, your lifestyle. Yes. And do you know what we call smoking and bad eating and uh, no exercise? Customer development. That's what we call it in cardiology. But, but we're going to fight it. And here are some of the Internet of You devices just for cardiology, including the Fitbits, the smartwatches, uh, blood pressure scales, all types of personal biometric systems, each one of these connected to the cloud. And here's an example I'm very familiar with. So at the top, in a previous life, I was the chief scientist of GE Cardiology. And that device, the GE Mac 5500, is a $9,000 EKG machine. They have them at most of the major hospitals, Mass General, the Brigham. And uh, it's $9,000, and it's state-of-the-art. It's wonderful. It's a great machine. And down here, we have my $75 Alive course, single lead versus 12 lead. But this paradigm means we can go to many more places. And so how is this new Internet of You ECG paradigm being implemented? Well, this is Dr. Leslie Saxon. Some of you may have heard of her. Center for Body Computing, Sanjay Gupta did a really wonderful series on her. And she said a couple of years ago on Twitter that she re used our device to do a quick cardiac check on patients and not do 312 lead ECGs. She said save $75 and about 60 minutes of somebody's time. Really cool. This is Dr. Eric Topol, probably the world's most famous cardiologist. And these people are friends of mine. So full disclosure, I'm famously self-promoting. Um, and, and on Rock Center with Nancy Snyderman, formerly of NBC, she said, uh, he said, you know, we're going to enable personalization. We're going to use these tools, and he uses them. In fact, he tweeted his new black box the other day with all these digital health tools. This is Dr. Elian Antman. He is a professor at Harvard Medical School, a cardiologist at the Brigham and Women's Hospital, and the current president of the American Heart Association. And in his plenary address at the AHA in the fall, he talked about prescribing my device to a patient diagnosing them. He is old school. He makes me look young. And he says, this is the future. And this is Dr. John Day, a little younger than me, but president of the Heart Rhythm Society, where I was on faculty 10 days ago here in Boston, and a, the head of electrophysiology at Intermountain Health, which is second only to Kaiser in terms of size. And again, he has 30 patients with my device who are able to connect directly to him, so because the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and digital health enables patient to caregiver straight lines. So how did we get all these leading people to support our device? By being the most clinically proof solution. So the Internet of You, unlike a lot of solutions in the new digital era, is, has to still be dependent upon validation. And so we've had, I'm just going to go through these fast, Abstract after abstract after journal, peer-reviewed journal article after peer-reviewed journal article after case study. And here from the Cleveland Clinic in January was something called the iTransmit study showing that we could pick up a serious arrhythmia as well as conventional equipment costing much more. And, and that 92% of the patients in this study loved our device more. Well, of course they do because they're addicted to their smartphone. You know, not every consumer is a patient, but every patient's a consumer. So we in healthcare have to start treating them as such. And again, new applications for drugs, evaluating drugs, all done with a simple device that we've enabled, that we've gotten through the FDA to you can buy on Amazon over the counter, even though it's a FDA cleared medical device. In 2015, we've already published seven peer reviewed articles. Ten days ago at Heart Rhythm, we had three abstracts presented. We have 33 publications in three years. I can tell you that's at least three times as much as any other digital health device. That's how we got the leading doctors at Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic, Brigham, Mass General to adopt our device. Validation proof. Here are some of the medical centers. I think you're familiar with some of these names, Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic, Mass General, who are supporters and users. 
And here's the problem we address, atrial fibrillation. I know there are some people in here actually who've had it, and I can guarantee you there are people in this room who will get it. And this is the most common arrhythmia, three million people in the US. But it's believed, and by the way, it's a disease of aging. About five to 7% of people under the age of 50 AFib is 5 to 7% of that AFib is under the age of 50, but it grows exponentially, whereas over 12% of people over 80 have AFib. It is, causes one-third of all strokes. There are a few things that are worse than death. Losing your mind to a stroke is one of them. It's devastating. And because of the aging of the American population, and actually the global population, AFib will become a much more prevalent disease, growing to 15 million by 2050. And it's already been proven that you can take a device like ours, this was done in the pre-smartphone era, and pick up this, this, this problem, atrial fibrillation. This is a study from 2009, pre-smartphone. And this is our customer demographics. Anybody here think, the, all right, so our largest group is 60 to 70. Anybody here think that's a standard app demographic? People between my age and 70? No. So our device, our customers, our patients. And here is the data that we are collecting. This is why I was at the Deep Learning Conference. Last month, we collected 250,000 ECGs. Every day into our cloud database come 10,000 new. We have the most extensive longitudinal ECG. We follow the evolution of your heart disease. And again, by following that, hopefully, we'll be able to predict before serious things happen. And here is, anybody here ever see one of those article, uh, ads on TV for Xarelto or Eliquis for atrial fibrillation not caused by a heart valve abnormality? Prime time ads focused on three million people. They're spending tens of millions of dollars. Why? Those are very valuable people. That will, they, those drug companies are not wasting their money. Ever, anybody ever hear of Patients Like Me, a web portal? Well, Patients Like Me is a web portal where you can go if you have prostate cancer, or you have lupus, or whatever. And they have 600 AFib patients. I have 5,000 every day who log into mine. And through that little screen, they look at it three or four times a day in my app. That might be an ad platform. That's the internet of you. 10% of US cardiologists in three years already own our device. And AFib is a disease for life. In a few people, we can cure it, probably for seven, eight years. In most people, we manage it. And we are not efficient at managing, yet our device can be used like a glucometer. Anybody here who's a diabetic or who knows a diabetic knows that used to be you go into the doctor to get your blood sugar, and now any type 1 diabetic would never manage their disease without constant blood sugar monitoring. And so here is an example of how the internet of you will improve healthcare. A patient will be able to use data from wearables, transported, processed by the smartphone, uploaded to the cloud, analyzed with deep machine learning, and fed back to them directly, actionable to speak to Abe's notion, information that allows them to, under the guidance and direction of a doctor, like when your blood sugar is this, take this much insulin, eat this, take a candy bar, whatever, physician-directed, patient self-management. That's the goal of the Internet of You. Improve healthcare, lower costs, improve outcomes. Thank you.